All right. Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, thanks again for uh, checking in for another Coach's Q&A. Um, I have one of my best friends here. Uh, we got Hong Tran. Uh, she is the Associate Director of Strength and Conditioning at Western Kentucky. Um, thanks so much for having us, uh, for being here. Um, and uh, why don't you tell the people that don't know so much about you, kind of who you are, what you're about, and what you do. Ooh, okay. Uh, all right. So my name's Hong. And I'm pretty much this uh, island looking badass woman that walks around at conferences and people just stare at. Uh, you know, I'm the associate director here at Western Kentucky, uh, pretty much do women's basketball and uh, women's soccer. Uh, but we all pitch in and work, you know, cover baseball, basketball, men's basketball. You know, we're all really pretty much tight in regards to, you know, whether you need to leave or not, we got each other's back, um, you know, and then. Um, a little bit more, more about myself is, you know, I'm that little voice in your head that tells you to get your ass up and go to work. Uh, so that that's me. And that's what I instill in people. Nice. That's awesome. I mean, uh, I can't, I don't even remember the first time that we met, but uh, it was definitely at a conference. <laughs> For sure. Um, I may or may not have written you a letter after I met you. You um, did. <laughs> I did. Um, so uh, immediately, I think uh, you know you you automatically come off as you know you're you're in charge. You can command and demand a room, an audience, a group of people. It doesn't matter. Um, but you know, me writing that letter, I think there was a sense of uh, breaking down a little bit of each other's walls um, and uh, really kind of being vulnerable. Can you talk about that and maybe how? You know, even though you said what you said, um, I see you as an excellent example of connecting uh, to your student athletes. So that vulnerability piece is something that is very much part of your every day. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, obviously it's really hard for me to break down and really, you know, show people who I am. Um, you know, uh, the only reason I let you in was because, you know, you actually made the effort. Um, so as soon as I see effort is being done, uh, I definitely give people a chance, um, you know, but I'm not that type of person that's going to chase after people's effort. Um, so, you know, the way I use that and, you know, in regards to getting my kids to buy into who I am is uh, I'm pretty straightforward. I'm honest. Uh, you know, I, I use my vulnerability as, you know, a way to connect with them because at the end of the day, you know, these kids, they they want a real person. They want somebody that's honest. They don't want somebody that's fake, that if you can speak all type of scientific words to them and they're just going to be like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, for me, it's uh, I'm a simple person. I'm a basic person. And, you know, it, uh, the, the way I use my, you know, vulnerability is I'm letting you see who I am and that's how it's going to be from here on out. Um, you know, once we connect, I'm going to talk to you the way you talk to me. And that's how we're going to address each other, obviously, with respect. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey. I mean, you're at, uh, you're at South Florida before uh, Western Kentucky. And um, you started off in football, so uh, much like myself. Can you kind of talk about maybe how that shaped you and your experiences that prepared you to be where you're at today? Absolutely, uh, man. So let's see, I was at USF. I was at USF for the longest time. Uh, I started there with Stuart Hart, uh, which is now in Nebraska. He was my first mentor. Um, and uh, it was, uh, you know, I transitioned there. I followed him from St. Leo, which was a smaller D2 school. And I knew that um, that was what I wanted to do. So, you know, I, I, um, I went to USF, I worked my ass off and then I transitioned over to football and that's where I started getting paid. Um, and then from there, you know, uh, I fit, you know, like it was a mold that just fit. Like, you know, I brought that energy, uh, men, the men, the kids, the people, the boys respected me. Um, and it was, it wasn't something that, uh, you know, I tried so hard. That was the thing, you know, like people try so hard to be something that they're not. Um, it was just natural for me, you know, uh, obviously the first, the first couple sessions, you know, I, I was with the old lineman. I love that shit. You know, the big boys in the trenches. I love it. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, I was spotting them up on 315 pounds. Like, you know, I was lit. I, I was in there. I was, I mean, all that swass, you know, spotting them big boys. Um, so, 
and you know, and that, and yeah, football was what molded me. You know, I, um, on game day, uh, uh, you know, I shared a locker with all those coaches. Uh, obviously, I did have to go in there first, grab my stuff, and then change, and then they would all come in there. But you know, I celebrated with them. Um, you know, it, it was, it was, um, I was built by men, and uh, and that's why I have such tough skin. You know, mm-hmm. uh, in regards to you know, and the. At the end of the day, like it was like uh, the kids wanted a female, you know, they, 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 they wanted a lot of those kids. If you look at it, they were raised by strong females. So, you know, like when men did not get them to do something or what they wanted to do, they'd be like, hey, Kurt, um, can you can you come talk to him? Can, you know, can you uh, get him to do what he's supposed to do? And you know what? Like when it comes down to like, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, all right, go see Coach Hong. <laughs> He'll get you in line. Yeah. So it's like uh, that tough love has always been ingrained in me, but mm-hmm. football really elevated me. Um, you know, uh, and, and um, it takes a certain type of female to, to really, you know, dig in that in that pile of things. But I mean, that's where who I am is, you know, who who who, who I became pretty. Much. Right. Right. So, yeah. It's, um, yeah. No, I think that's good. And I think you bring up a massive point that, you know, I'm lucky to be in a relationship with a man, a man that supports women in football, you know, his colleagues and his closest coworkers or uh, his closest colleagues, they support women in football. And, you know, what, if you dial it down to one thing or one reason why that should be the case is exactly what you mentioned. And that's that there are so many, um, or that at least there's a high percentage of uh, football players that is that are raised by a single parent home, and that single parent is, tends to be a, their mom or their grandmother mm-hmm. or their aunt, you know. And so I think that attests so much to that respect that they immediately have for women. You know, a lot of programs they always one of their number one pillars is to respect women. But you know, there's a handful of football players that actually that's all they know. Right? That that's all they know. Um but so kind of stepping aside from uh you know your passion for the industry and uh you know what you do and how you do it. Can you talk about maybe a passion that you have, maybe not so much as a professional, but maybe on the personal side of things or something that gets you going? Ooh, okay. Uh okay, let's see. Uh, I love to cook. Yes. Uh, you know, like I you can give me any type of ingredients and I can make something out of it. Uh, <laughs> and, and and it's relaxing for me. I mean, it's just happiness. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know that, but, you know, I can whip it in the kitchen now. Uh, it, it don't matter what it is. It, it doesn't. Um, so, you know, um, that's definitely something that I'm passionate about. And then another thing, too, like I right, um, meditating, uh, you know, meditating is a big thing for me. And I think that, uh, you know, I, I mean, I would suggest for everybody, you know, to do it. Um, you know, whether it's meditating or prayer, uh, I'm big on it. And it's, it's a, it's a form of stillness that, that is so satisfying that you pretty much feel like you're in control of you, your mind, your body. I mean, it, it, it takes it, it's a deep, deep, deep process. Um, and a lot of people, you know, when I talk about it, they think I'm crazy and they just don't understand that wavelength that I'm on. So, you know, it's, It's obviously hard to talk to people about that, but that's another thing that I'm very passionate about. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I think sometimes it, it's that component that keeps us healthy as coaches is when you can get in tune with yourself and really like you talk about getting on that wavelength and that wavelength is very different than when you're coaching on the floor with your athletes. Right. But I think it's, it's certainly a layer and it's certainly a part of why you can be so successful on the floor with your athletes. So so we are right in the thick of like your adjustment to what's going on, you know, how are you staying in touch with your athletes, like holding them accountable if you can, just like the, just overall adjustment personally and professionally. Ooh, okay. All right. So um, this is where culture comes in, buy-in. Uh, you know, uh, standards, expectations have been set. Um, and the kids are like, ooh, I know if I don't do this, Coach Hong is going to get me when I get back. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously 
a lot of our kids today thrive on social media. Like they love it. They're deep in it. So, you know, uh, whether it's Twitter, whether it's IG, whatever it is, you know, that's where um, me and other professionals have had to like adjust. You know, uh, that's where we're compromising with them. And, you know, okay, cool. I'm going to, I don't like social media, but I'm going to put myself out there more. So the kids are like, okay, Coach Hong's about this, you know, so we're about this. So we're going to do the thing. Um, so, you know, that's how I'm holding them accountable. Uh, they can tag me, they can't tag me, but I know that at the end of the day, you know, they're handling business. Um, I'll text them. A lot of them don't like having those conversations on the phone. They don't like talking on the phone, you know. So a lot of our kids have actually already been practicing social distance for a minute um, <laughs> because they don't they don't like being around people, you know. They don't like talking to people. Uh, so uh, I, the other day I texted them all and I was like, so are you guys thriving in this atmosphere? And they're like, Coach Hong, yes, we love this, you know, so, uh, so it's pretty much, you know, uh, texting them, calling them, uh, using social media more often, and, um, and then at the same time, you know, uh, uh, I put a leader in place, um, and then, you know, before I put that leadership on them, I asked them, are you okay with it, and they're like, yeah, we're totally for it, and I was like, all right, so then now they're the person that, you know, holds their teammates accountable. You know, because at the end of the day, uh, what happens if I, you know, whatever, I catch the coronavirus and, you know, you don't have anybody in place to run the program, right? So you're molding this one kid um, that you put in leadership to be like, hold the kids accountable. This is what they're supposed to do. All right. You know everything that's supposed to go on. So then if I if I catch it and I'm in bed, I know you're running this thing. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's huge. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much how I'm holding them accountable. Nice. And what about uh, what about any kind of personal adjustments? Like, I know you have a fur baby at home. You know, how is that working out? Obviously, you're still going into work. So, has that been any changing? Like, changes? Are you prepared to have to hunger down at home? Right. So, um, my little fur baby is not with me right now. My fur baby is with my mother, and my fur baby is with like four other fur babies. So, <laughs> she's having a lot of fun. Um, and then for me, uh, yeah, I have a lot of tuna packets, uh, a lot of rice, um, and I got a lot of frozen vegetables. So, you know, uh, I got crackers. I got cr um, what else I got? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I have like three dozen of eggs. So uh, eggs I, eggs I are out. I went to the grocery store last <laughs> night. Eggs, there are no eggs in the grocery store. Right. So then I got a lot of protein powder too. So we're good. I mean, I can survive this. Um, but in regards to that, like, um, no, you know, um, my thought process in regards to that is uh, I'm good at home uh, and I don't want to take this, whether I do have it or not, I don't want to take it to my mom or brother um, or, you know, anybody else that is, um, that can't handle this, um, you know, and their immune system isn't where it needs to be. Um, you know, my biggest thing is uh, the other day I was having a conversation with one of my former athletes and um, they were talking about, oh, you know, if it happens, it happens. No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, I have I have a kid that was, you know, former athlete here. Um, she got diagnosed with cancer. Um, you know, it's like and so I'm it's it's uh, I'm going to stand up for her. And I think that's the problem with people today. They're not standing up for the people that are, you know, compromised, that won't survive this. So, you know, I, I talked to, to, to Alyssa Kavanaugh and I said to her, you know, I'm standing up for you because I was like, I I'm letting these people know that they need to stay their asses at home because you, I was like, you're compromised. You can die from this. And, right. you know, she was like, I appreciate that so much, Coach Hong. Like, people don't realize how bad it really is for us. So, you yeah. know, uh, I'm just going to stay my, my ass at home and I'm going to, you know, work out, do my thing, uh, call in with my athletes, uh, handle my business, but I'm not going anywhere. You know, yeah. I, I know who I'm interacting with and who I'm not. And I don't want anybody in my space that I don't know where they've been. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's fair. And that is pretty good advice because I think a little, there's, 
it's gotten to a point where, you know, the government and the U.S. officials, they wouldn't be talking about it the way that it was if it wasn't as serious. And so it, we don't I don't think we're ever going to know really how bad it is because politics are politics and the news are, is the news um, and media is media. However, I think it's important that we know that it spreads when you're in contact with other humans. And that's as simple as it is. So if you can minimize that or completely diminish that altogether, then I think that's a goal. I think that's a right way to do it because no matter what it's going to spread if you're out and about. So at the end of the day, like if we could listen to that, I think that'll be good. So uh, the, the last little part that I have for you, you have to answer. There's a couple questions. They're one word answers. <laughs> Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Game time. Game time. All right. Uh, <laughs> I call them my Corona fire questions. All right. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So what is your new COVID go-to breakfast? Eggs and beans. <laughs> Three words. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you have a new COVID activity? Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Uh, uh, watching Netflix. <laughs> okay. Well, then what's a new COVID habit? Um, taking a nap. <laughs> Something that you took advantage of before COVID hit. Something what? What'd you say? Something that you took advantage of before COVID hit. Bought toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> A COVID TV show or movie that you're hooked on? El Dragón. Say that one more time. El Dragón. And what is that about? Girl, it's drug cartels. Girl cartel. Nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> well, that was, this is what we do. It happens. We laugh. We laugh hard. It doesn't matter what happens. That's why I love this woman. Okay. Um, so, but thank you so much for being a part of this today. I hope that all you guys kind of gain some insight, understand what it's like to, you know, have a tough skin, but also be vulnerable at the same time. And Stay safe and stay healthy, my friends. Peace out, people.